All right, so look at your um, get number one for today, which is examples of proof. These are a little bit more clear cut, a little bit easier to see than some of the ones we've been doing. So look at number one. Statement one says this is angle A and angle B are right angles. What is the reason for that? Okay, sorry, you can't see my screen. So this is a given statement for the reason. Would this be given? All right, next. The measure of angle A is 90 degrees. The measure of angle B is 90 degrees. What allows you to say they are 90 degrees? Huh? Definition of a right angle. All right, next, the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B. What did you do? What did you take out and put in? You replaced, so you substituted. So what method, what property is that? Substitution. And then what's the last one? You guys have seen this one a lot. Definition of congruence. Definition of congruence. Next one. What's reason number one? What is what is it always given? So let's read what we're given. We're given angle A and angle B are supplementary. Angle C and angle B are supplementary. Prove angle A is congruent to angle C. Okay. Our next statement, so this is one, two, three, four, and five. Our next statement says the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is equal to 90 degrees B. And then the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B equals 180 degrees. What allows us to say that? Definition of what kind of angle? Supplementary angle. Okay. What are we doing in step three? Substitution. Okay, so these two things, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 180, and angle C plus the measure of angle B equals 180. We're setting 
um, we're basically setting these equal to each other because they're both equal one and two. They're substituting. Mm -hmm. All right, going from step three to step four, what'd you take out? What'd you do? We took out the B. So when you're taking away, what does that say? When you're taking away, think about algebra subtraction, algebra property. And then going from equals to congruent, yes, it's a little congruent symbol, it's kind of hard to see. Going from equals to congruent is definition of congruent. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. I want you to try example three. You have a word bank down here to choose from. I want you to try example three. We will go over it in a few minutes. So reason number one is your given. That is always going to be the case. Please do not miss that. Okay, we are given angle A plus angle B are complementary. Angle C plus angle B are complementary. So the next step, the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 90. And then the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B equals 90. That would be definition of complementary. What are we doing here? So to go from this step to this step, this is measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals 90, the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B equals 90. They both equal 90, so you can set them equal to each other. You can set them to this degree, you can set them equal to the measure of angle C plus the measure of angle B. So we're subbing in, so that is substitution. And then the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle C. Now, what did we take out? B, so we subtracted it. So that would be subtracting property. And then going from equals to congruent is just what? What would the last thing be? Definition of congruence. So we have statements and reasons. This is a two column proof. We are given angle QPS is congruent to angle TPR. Okay. So you write that in. If it's not given to you, if it's not written out for you, you just have to write in your given statement. The reason it's given to us. Okay, going from A to B, actually. So we filled in our given. Let's fill in what we have to prove because that's not filled in. We're trying to prove that angle QPR is congruent to angle T. P S. Uh, 
right? Reason B, let's look at the statement B. Statement B says the measure of angle QPS equals the measure of angle QPR. Now we are going from equals to congruent. See that these are the same angles. We're going from congruent to equal. What is that? Definition of congruence. All right. Part C, the measure of angle QPS, so QPS, that's here, equals the measure of angle QPR, that's this little angle, plus the measure of angle RPS. So it's saying these two angles make up the bigger angle. What property is that? And, it, and it, this is the other part of that angle. So TPR is TPS and RPS. Basically, the bigger angle is composed of the two smaller angles. Yes, angle addition postulate. Good. Amani, did you say that? And that was on one of that. Um, so the page where we had to look at pictures and decide what you can assume and what you can't assume. If you're given a picture, you can assume angle addition. Okay. You can't assume angle bisectors, but you can assume angle addition, All right? So, how would you put in substitution here? Mm -hmm. So let's read this. The measure of angle QPS equals the measure of angle QPR plus the measure of angle RPS. Okay, the measure of angle TPR equals the measure of angle TPS plus the measure of angle RPS. So, TPR. equals the measure of angle QPR plus the measure of angle RPS. Oh. Substitute that. And then we can set these two equal to each other. So the measure of angle QPR plus the measure of angle RPS equals the measure of angle TPS plus the measure of angle RPS. <laughs> so look at what you're trying to get to. You're trying to get to QPR and TPS. Are these angles the same here at RPS, RPS? Can we subtract them? So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, study your yellow sheet. If you need more practice, this is something you can practice with. Mm -hmm.